All right, all right. For those, of all of you DJs out there are saying that it's impossible to join the Discord channel, let me teach you how to join the Discord channel. So first of all, you go to our Discord, and you actually won't see all of those, right? You will only see welcome beginner traders. And you will see community. I don't think you will see community announcement. I'm not really sure anymore. A video announcement, and everything else is actually blocked. Uh, and there's channel instruction actually. I probably should put something here. Um, so you, what you will do is you go to welcome, click here, right? You go to here, and then you read all of these welcome messages over here, and then you click when you agree, right? You have to agree with the terms and services. When you click agree here. You, you click the thumbs up and you will have access to all of the discords, like including the MMAT, uh, due, uh, due diligence stuff. Uh, you know, I'm gonna put some 2020 um, documents on here and there's some interesting 2021 ones uh, for those of you DGENs who actually wanna see all these documents. Uh, anyways, uh, let's get to the main topic of this video. Oh, before I get into today's content again, I know you guys watched the intro, you watch how to join Discord. Another thing is uh, we're gonna talk about the $1,000 challenge and what we call the probability challenge. Um, those challenges are, are in the process of preparation. I mean, technically they are on, um, we are preparing for those and apparently number two just got COVID. So I got this news about uh, one, two, three hours ago, okay? And then I'm telling you guys. So number two got COVID, and fortunately I don't have COVID because I just got tested yesterday. Uh, so uh, yes, good for me, bad for him. So he's really miserable, he's sick. We were gonna go to the bank together and set up a company uh, bank account so we can actually get, you know, the Patreon money and the, uh, you know, YouTube money into one account and we're just gonna use that account to trade. Uh, so then that account will be like the quote unquote challenge account. Um, but because in order to have a business account set up, both of us has to be present at the same time in a bank. But apparently he got COVID, therefore bank doesn't want him to be there. And I don't have all of the documents with me. And uh, I don't think signing up a proxy statement will work. So this, this live action $1,000 challenge has to be delayed until further notice, which will be until number two actually got better or number two tested positive. So on average, COVID takes about two weeks to recover. So let's see how that works. But in the meantime, on Patreon, I will post some very interesting trade ideas or content. And I will post a theory of a thousand dollar challenge preparation videos, including some of the concepts you have to understand before you join a challenge and be some of the some of the homework that you have to do for certain stocks. And see, we're gonna talk about picking criteria for what stocks we're gonna pick, what options we're gonna pick for the thousand dollar challenge. And for those of you who don't trade options, there's gonna be a specific stock sort of trading. Um, if you want to join, here are the stock considerations and what you should do on stocks. And you you gotta set up your stop losses and basically the philosophy behind the challenge will be in that series of videos. And uh, hopefully you guys love it. Anyways, row the actual clip. Hey, yo, finally, right after three minutes of wumbo jumbo, blah, 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 here is the actual content of the video. So today we are actually gonna compare MM, MMTLP and MMAT in terms of their liquidity, in terms of which the pros and cons of um, what they bear, each of them, what they bear, the pros and cons, and, and whether it's actually safe to invest or not. But before then, I will give you a quick update on, remember this video, MMAT the $100 million goose hunt to be continued where the money go. And guys, I found the money. Um, it's literally parked very deep in the SEC filings. For those of you who want a updated video on that one, comment down below or just like this video or just spam commenting or start chatting about this in main chat in Discord things I've already taught you guys how to join Discord. Um, so a quick rundown of this is basically there is a SEC filing loophole 
and basically whatever this is the money account right this is a hundred million dollars not shares um if we put a definitive dollar amount or if we put a definitive share amount on it this just means in the next three years all of these shares represented by the 100 million dollars will be definitive dilution until further notice but anyways this video is not about this we're just gonna talk about uh we're just gonna compare mmtlp and mmat and for those of you who are interested in this video please comment down below or like our video uh, just comment you know we like comments okay uh, we also love the, sh the hate comments right we read all of them so just do that okay so let, let, let's compare so first of all we have our champion of the day mmtlp which we all know right it's a preferred share which means it gives you less legal it gives shareholders um, shareholders less less legal protection right because you know before you actually agreed to buy in or in this case they, it's just a placeholder for you guys or for us um, you know you basically agree that the company controls the terms of uh, services or policies of this this preferred share and you know if it goes zero out it's zero out and because you know in one of those s3s or one of the filings which i will show you guys if you guys are coming down below like, where are the proofs boy you know i'll give it to you guys it literally says that you know if the the land doesn't get sold 12 31 2021 uh you know the company have the rights to basically zero out all of these shares or do whatever they want with those shares or just saying that you know you might not give any get any dividend uh, that kind of thing and then b it is traded on otc and everybody knows that what i feel about trading on otc market on um, anything traded on otc market in chinese is called xiangu or in in uh in, in in japanese is another really bad word and in uh, in english it's just literally penny stocks and how people do penny stock pump and dump it's really bad for the ecosystem of a company and it's usually shareholders or you know insiders trying to offload their shares on um, and if you guys want a video of me explaining why george is probably not gonna be the person who's doing it i mean it's kind of obvious but you know it's another video idea that you know you can comment down below and i will make that video explain to you one two three four five why george wasn't the person who did it and how much share it requires to actually make a deal with the mm and there are five top suspect we call them suspect because you guys think it's really a bad practice for them to do so but by them offloading and basically trade that mm by trading MMTLP on the market, it actually giving us um, shareholders a way out. Basically, they offer liquidity to us. So then if we actually add the liquidity to MMTLP, this MMTLP ticker symbol or this liquidation policy or method is probably worth around $1.3, okay? So let's talk about the cons, okay? The, the cons is basically infinite. Uh, you have chances, you have chances, chances of getting zeroed out okay and some of some of my subscribers and uh, watchers and some of my discord uh, chatters or discord participant um, their account got zeroed out uh, especially when they're with an international brokerage i know someone who had a chinese broker zeroed out their mmtlp account we have a korean one that did that those are due to like reg regulations all this kind of stuff and due to they need to basically closing down on um, the legal liability on compliance aspects of this otc ticker so this is chances of getting zeroed out uh, it's actually pretty high so and another con is we have limited information that this is the big one okay for me i love to take risk but i only take informed risk right if i know that tesla if you know you know for example tesla right tesla squeezed today and it's probably going to squeeze tomorrow too um and i have information that, that indicate that that might happen because you know heuristics and all this kind of stuff because like algorithms and but in general anything that related to a gamma squeeze or a squeeze or a potential squeeze or a potential upside that's higher than five to seven percent it has an implied risk and in order to offset that implied risk in institutions or in investment industry in general we try to obtain more information to offset our risk or to sort of create enough confirmation bias to make 
sure that we are safe or we are comfortable with making the bet. In here, you are not comfortable with any of the bet because A, you have no idea who exactly even made the deal with the MM to start trading the stock. And B, you don't know the terms and policies and all of these things behind this ticker. Uh, for example, like uh, we have no idea how much money is Oracle really making. We have no idea uh, what kind of uh, agreement they have with NextBridge. We have no idea what is really going on with the land. We have no idea the actual terms of the lease of the land. And we have no idea what happened to you know the two uh, testing wells that got dropped out. And we only have four left. And we have no idea their expenses are. We don't know if they're overspending. We don't know anything about this company. If you don't have anything, uh, if you don't know anything about the company, how are you going to trade it? Impossible, right? And then all of the Reddit and all of the um, you know Twitter speculations on the stock is literally based on people's limited understanding of the oil industry. And we literally have two experts literally in our Discord. If you add them, you can actually ask them questions. One of them has been a oil consultant for a long time and the other of them literally works in the oil industry. And three, this this is this is thing I have problem with it, is too many noise. What is interesting about MM and TLP is a lot of YouTubers and a lot of social media influencers get views, followers from this ticker. So at first they might be iffy about it, but when you sort of grow attachment to a ticker to your community, you sort of you sort of become like you your community sway to you to make yourself like less rational and basically they become more emotionally charged therefore they don't make rational decisions anymore and then because they are putting out content based on their attachment or based on that they need the views to to get more views or whatever therefore a lot of those noise are generated and because those noise are generated it sort of created a a even worse pump and dump scene of this stock i mean it is a penny stock anyways and i don't have i i honestly don't think there's any pros with it but but you know I'll, I'll still give it to you guys but again there's too much noise therefore it's really bad practice to trade a stock that with a lot of noise like that so what are the pros here well the pros there is you have a chance right you have a chance you have one more pump and dump and during that pump and dump you have a 100 percent upside if it ever happens but a 100 upside with a less than 5% chance of happening. So weigh your odds, right? If, you, if you're fluent in algorithm or fluent in mathematics, maybe you can make it work to make expected value to be about 5% with this, this uh, initial setup. But this is it for MMTLP. So MMAT. So first of all, we got to say that MMAT is traded on the NASDAQ, right? That means that we have liquidity liquidity and you know at least we have some sort of legal protections okay we have some legal protections let's just say giant fraud happened it got committed the sec come down and you know all of us join a class action law so at least you got someone to sue in here you actually don't have anyone to sue like in mmtlp's case they're actually not really legally li liable the mms are just underwriters and then the insiders are just offloading their share to a over counter market to gain liquidity for them to exit. There's nothing they did wrong and there's nothing you can prove that they did wrong because it's a private held company. But for MMAT, you can actually have public investigations. Okay, what are some pros? At least we have access to financial documents, right? This is a clear pro. And we have access to actual PR, right? For example, if we go to George, where do we have George? George, where are you? We just go to George. We go to George's Twitter and all of these are, well, now we call them PR, but not really official PR, but semi-official PR. He posts stuff that are related to the business itself, okay? And then I will make a detailed video on this on this video and explain to you guys their advantages and disadvantages. And there are some deceiving stuff that they're talking about. 
they, they didn't really it's not deceiving it's just like they're not lying it out for you guys there are actually a lot of challenges for the market to adapt their technology even though it's actually quite good if a big player is in board uh, on board and decide to purchase their ar or vr lenses but apparently facebook actually have their own manufacturers so there's a huge there's some problems within that but if we we're betting on a bright future we're betting on some stuff that might or might not happen we have to bet on information that we can obtain and we can obtain information on mm mmtlp therefore it's a pro okay it's a pro and then three is we have access to filings again on sec filings you know who's selling who's buying all of those things are semi-transparent and we know that george literally based on george's filing last month we know that he thinks three dollars is a cheap price to exercise his options so he paid tax at a three dollar basis i'll make a video about the impact of that filing to investors and what basically george is implying by making that trade uh, you know it will, it will come out but uh you know i'm a little bit busy these days so wait a little bit there will be more informational content later on and then the con for this is a small cap very risky during market downturns very very risky um, if you go look at the data from the past 30 years if it's a small cap stock and the market is turning down it got hit super super badly very very badly this is one of the, the first stock that most investors are gonna pull out if a downturn happened and then three two prone to investor manipulation aka retail aka you know hash fund manipulation to retails <sighs> a prime example of this would be this right here right this this thing you can attribute it to reverse gamma squeeze of course because they, they disabled options for a long um, period of time therefore it's actually in liquid like all of these are partially in liquid partially George's fault, partially our fault, partially on um, a lot of other people's fault. But again, uh, a lot of these are quote unquote hash fund manipulation. But again, they have the money, they can short. We don't have the money, we don't have the resources. So it's fair game for them. Uh, a third con is due to merger complexity things can not be a hundred percent transparent and you guys are like there's nothing a hundred percent transparent okay let me let me un unblock it or 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 basically um, strip it down a little bit what do i mean by not a hundred percent transparent because this is a messy merger with two messy companies who are both on the the brink of extinction basically and um and, and mergers are notoriously not simple to audit. Therefore, a lot of the document they provided will never be completely audited. Therefore, a lot of those numbers on the financial statements might not be, let's just say, 100% accurate. Therefore, whatever you see on those documents, you have to take a grain of salt until the company becomes actually prof profitable. And due to that, um, it creates a lot of sort of a negative institutional investor sentiment. Therefore, you will see retail owning most of the flow and insider owning most of the flow instead of institutional investors owning most of the flow, which actually will lessen or mitigate the potential upwards vitality of the stock in general. And fourth, which is the last con, is it's too far, too far from being profitable and its CFO doesn't seem comfortable uh you know its CFO doesn't seem very um competent in whatever he does right we always talk about the CFO of Fisker and the CEO of Fisker are really great at PR really good at what they're do what they're doing uh, the way how they spend their money is really rational uh, in this case I honestly don't think the C the management in this company, even though they, they do have great tech for the future, um, if you know all of the PR and all of the stuff they posted are true, 
they don't have a clear marketing plan or go-to-market strategy, and their CFO doesn't seem to be very competent in terms of um, basically utilizing or restructuring the company's financial structure to make it more appealing to certain investors. Okay. Anyways, this is it for this video. If you like those contents, smash a like button and subscribe. See you guys on the upside.